Hey guys, my name is Mark Boykins from Big Mount Studio, and we're back again creating and working on this prototype right here. And this is a prototype that was built by Anton from Envision. And the website I'm at is dribble.com. What we're doing here is some of my viewers have requested, how do I build things live? And another, others have also requested, hey, can you take something, you know, a finished mock-up and show how you build it? And so that's what I'm doing. I'm combining both those things. And this is totally live. I haven't done this before. I haven't created the, the project yet. You know, usually when I create videos, I create the project, make sure it's working, make sure everything's fine. And then I'll start from a template that's like half built and then just teach you the one thing that I'm going to teach you from a, an existing project. But that's not the case this time. I built this from scratch, from nothing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is I had to look at the animated GIF to figure out you know, the speed of the animation. And also when you look at this floating action button here, this is like an Android uh, material design. If you look at it, these kind of bounce when they open up. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna create some bounce on those buttons and we're going to work on this top part right here for this next video. Okay, so let's start, let's go to our project and let's start with these buttons here. And how, how are we gonna make them bounce? Well, what I'm going to do is in order to animate a bounce, you're going to use a spring with animation. So that's what we're going to do. I mean, a spring with damping. We're going to use that kind of animation is the, the spring with damping animation. And so when it opens, we're going to offset the location a little bit. And then we're going to animate the resetting of that location with the spring. And it will bounce back and forth. So we're not going to change anything here. The icons that you see here that is considered the destination of the animation so we're going to keep that the same so let's go into our view controller and uh you know first yeah let's do this let's make this wider first of all and let's go back to our storyboard open up the assistant editor and close these things and we need to create outlets for these buttons right here if we want to animate them. So let's do that. And I'll just call this like the pencil button. Uh, this will be the chat button. And we'll make this the clock button. I like to keep all my outlets grouped together like this. <laughs> it's a small thing. It's the little things. Okay, now let's uh, let's go back to the regular view, and let's go back to our view controller. Okay, so we have those three buttons, and how how are we going to do this? When I he, this is where I, I tap the button and I do the animation here. Okay, so this is closing the menu. We don't have to do it there. We have to do it when the menu opens. And we're animating that. So can I? Let me just try this. I don't know if this is going to work. We'll just try it with one button first. And we'll start with the what is it, the pencil one at the top. And I'm going to do the same thing. Do transform. And this time, instead of uh, like what I'm doing here, uh, I'm tra you know changing the, uh, the scaling it. I'm doing down here, I'm scaling the menu. I'm going to use the, the repositioning one, the translation. And for this one, it's going to, you know, like the pencil icon is right above the floating action button, right? So we want it to come down a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll have this come down. So the X will be zero, so it's not going side to side but the Y will come down. And so what you do is you just add, uh, let's just, let's keep it small. We'll just add 10. So that's gonna push it down 10 points. But let me see, now after that goes down, so I, I gotta, I have to really think this through. So when they click it, um, I know, I got it. Let, let's just do this. This This will be simpler. I am actually, when you close the menu button, that's actually where I'm going to reposition it. So then we'll try this. Then when we open it, 
will be kind of like this, right? It'll be self.pencil button dot transform. Oh, no, we can't do this because this is a, a different type of animation. Let me check one more thing. Let me look at that, that mock-up again. Okay. It is a different animation. See, when you, when you click on the button, this the menu itself, the big red circle, doesn't bounce. So we can't do that. I was thinking about we could just change this animation right here to use the spring animation, but this one doesn't bounce. But that's all right. We could just put it down here. Uh, comments. Let me close that. UI view. Animate. And then we want the... Right here. This one right here. You know, it stinks. I used to just be able to like look in here, but you know, they used to put the ellipsis at the end and cut it off at the end. But now they cut it off in the center, so I can't even tell what these animations are. I have to read this up here. This is what we want. We want uh, the physical spring. Okay, we're going to use the same uh, duration here. No, wait, actually, let's see. No, it's going to be longer. So that bounce happens after the menu is already out. So we want that animation to, to last longer. And uh, we'll make it last, like, let's try 0.5. And we'll delay it uh, 0.01. When the menu expands and shows, it only takes 0.3 seconds to show. And so I'm going to start this animation after it's fully shown. Um, let's go 0.2. So before it's fully expanded, it'll already start to spring back in place. But it'll last, you know, 0.4 seconds longer than, than this total duration right here. Okay, use spring with damping. So damping, I usually like to start right in the middle at 0.5. If it's one, it completely dampens it out and there's no spring at all. So I'm gonna go for middle of the road. I never change the initial spring velocity. I always keep that zero. And options, uh, we'll just use the default options and see what that looks like. Okay, here's my animation. And what I'm going to animate is this right here. Let's take that out since we know we can't use that anymore. I'll stick it in there. Okay, do I want anything to happen after it's done animating? No, I don't, so I'm just going to delete this for now. Oh, <laughs> I, I never finished this, did I? Equals dot identity. Okay, so again, what's happening here is when the menu is closed, when I call, so when the view loads up here, the view did load, we call this close menu. And down here, this is where we kind of like wind up the spring. I, I, I kind of call that. It's a, a technique where everything by default is in its destination. When you look at the storyboard, everything's in its destination. And then when you start the application, you want to wind everything up. You want to move everything where the animation is going to start. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm winding everything up. So the animation will start here, and we're going to transform this pencil button to offset it by 10. It's vertical position by 10. And then when we click the button, we're going to unwind everything, set everything, remove all the transforms applied to objects, and animate them back to their destination. So there's a little bit of spring there. Do you see that? Let's look at it again. So <laughs> it looks like there's some kind of problem because when I click it, I don't see this, the animation again. All right, let's see. Let's make sure it's even being run. Oh, no. All right, here's the problem. I'm not even checking if it's being closed or opened. So we have to kind of use the same logic here inside of our animation. <laughs> you guys are probably watching me like, like, duh, man, I saw that right from the beginning. Okay. Um, You know, we don't have to here we're closing closing the menu, and so when we close it here, we don't really have to do anything. So basically, we're just checking if it's uh, not the identity. So I think we can just do it like that. Um, yeah, let's try that. <laughs> I 
I think I messed it up. If it equals the identity, set it to identity. No, that doesn't. Oh, jeez. Um. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was I was thinking this was the pencil. Uh, we can do this two two different ways, basically. If we can we can make this a pencil and change this to not equals, or leave it at as menu and leave it to equals. So basically, what, what this is saying right here is, if the menu is is showing, then uh, animate the bounce back to the position, and that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to stick with doing it that way. And notice I'm only doing the pencil first because I want to get that working. I don't want to do all of them at the same time and you know have to fix all three of them at the same time every time they make a change. So I'm just working with the pencil first. Okay, that looks good. We're clicking it and it's bouncing every time. But we want to give it more of a bounce, right? Because when we look at this, yeah, it's got more bounce, more, more spring to it. And what do you do? You just you just lower this value right here, three. You do a couple things. Uh, this will make it bounce more. And what we can also do is we can offset it a little bit more too. And this will give it more bounce because it's, it's traveling more and it's and it's going to bounce more at the end. There you go. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to do this with the the rest of the. The rest of the buttons. Uh, we don't need self here, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, the next one is the chat icon, right? Chat button dot transform. CG of fine transform. And we're going to now I move this one by 15. Now notice this time you know where the position looking at the position of the button it's it's diagonal right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it to the right a little bit and move it down a little bit so when it animates it animates out at like a 45 degree angle and i'm doing 15 for this one and at an angle i'm sure it's shorter so let's just do like let's try 11 so i'll go 11 over to the right and then 11 down and we'll try that and take a look <coughs> excuse me See how that looks. And then we're going to animate it back to its original position when the when it opens up. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and for this one, I'm just going to when I wind it up, when I reposition it, I'm going to move it fifty. 15 points over to the right. So that's strictly on the X axis. Then so we're going to add 15 to it here and nothing. So it's not going to go down at all or up. And that should do that. That should finish it for this, for that menu button. And we're going to remove the transforms and have it animate it back to its original position. Nice. There, how's that look? Okay, I think we're done with this uh, floating action button here. Okay guys, I'm gonna cut the video at this point because the next video is a little bit longer. The menu for the floating action button is now complete. In the next video, we'll be setting up a data model, UI, and doing some animation for that top portion of the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.